Right, welcome to another video. Um, I just felt compelled to um, do a video on um, some boots. Um, British Army issue genuine boots. Okay, now these um, particular ones we're looking at now, um, they were called the Combat High Boots or DMS boots. DMS stands for Direct Moulded Sole. The soles are moulded directly onto the bottom as you can see. Um, very good quality pair of boots, very hard wearing, and they were definitely built to last. I was issued a pair of these back in 1989, and they will just keep going forever. They really, really will. Um, they're very heavy. Um, I'm not sure how heavy exactly. We're going to do that now. Blimey. One boot is one point. 0 0.08 kilos or 2.6 pound per boot so they're very heavy they're very hard wearing and they're very tough okay now from back in the days when I used to use these out on patrol exercise etc um, how we was taught to actually break them in was to um, chuck boiling water over them and just kick them around the garden just kick the crap out of them okay just fry them against the wall as hard as you can and then you just put loads and loads of boot polish in keep rubbing it in leave it for a day keep putting layers and layers of polish on that is what we was taught um, these ones um, what I've done with these ones is uh, if I wanted to break them in quickly um, these were bought off of eBay I believe these um, starting from about 20 pound for something in condition as these um, going less for you know really worn out ones okay uh, what I wanted to do was to um, break them in quickly didn't have time to wear them for like um, about 50 miles of hard use walking <laughs> so what I decided to do was to um, fill them right up to the top and submerge them in the sink of hot tap water as hot as your sink tap will go okay just leave them in there for about 15 minutes obviously take the insoles out take the laces off first right so that was in there for 15 minutes I took them out it was great because it's holding all the water nothing was escaping so there's no leak that's brilliant once I drained all the water out I just chucked loads and loads of newspaper inside all scrunched up and stuffed in there then you can use some snow seal which is high quality beeswax um, dubbing, anything you want, it doesn't really matter um, to be honest. Boot polish, whether it's kiwi, cherry blossom, parade gloss, you name it, you know, the list is endless regarding boot treatments. But the idea is, is whilst they're hot, get some waxy material rubbed in there, okay? So once it's hot, just put a generous coating all over. I use snow seal on these particular ones, okay? Now the next day when I went to work, I took all of the newspaper out. I've got some really thin, you know, Adidas sports socks, okay? Just the thinnest ones you can get. Put them on, and I put these boots on. Now, I put these boots on as hard as I could, as tight as I could. So you pull these, and it just goes proper tight, okay? So it was actually quite painful to walk around them. Um, two days, I um, went everywhere with these tight as possible. So what I was actually doing, I mean, they were, my feet were damp inside, okay, from the start. Day two wasn't so bad, but they're still a little bit damp. But as the boots were drying, they were actually molding to my feet. And of course, I'm wearing them all the time, so they're constantly being used. So it's just suppling it all up, making it nice and soft, okay? Because at the end of the day, that's what you want out of a good pair of boots, something that's comfortable. Something brand new, it will cripple your feet. Now, that was fine, and then as soon as a couple of days passed, you know, I just put normal thick socks on, and I didn't wear them as tight, and I just polished them every day, building up the layers, okay? And when I went out to the um, Urban Warfare Training Village um, in England recently, you see the video I've done before, I wore these everywhere, done some tapping with them with a Bergen on, just like the old days, and they were great, brilliant, spot on pair of boots, really, really well made and up to the job, okay? 
quality boots. Now, this is all personal opinion. Um, some of the guys of old hated them, some of them loved them. Um, I believe the guys who just put up and shut up and just kept wearing them all the time. After a certain amount of time, they really did become comfortable. But a lot of people just couldn't put up with breaking them in for a couple of years. Okay, and they just sold them, got rid of them, got themselves some different boots, which is fine. You know, everyone's got their opinions and choices. Don't knock anyone for changing their mind. So they are a good pair of boots. You just need to give them time if you want them to work for you. Um, some of the guys I know um, be wearing these for 15, 20 years, and they're still very, very comfortable. So what I'm going to do is show you the inside. I don't know if you can see it very well but the quality and the fitness is very very good very well made and as you can see the the lace holes go right up to the top you haven't got the little clips okay these are good quality boots right these were on issue I'm not sure if they were um, late 70s but it was definitely available in the 80s that's when I was issued mine okay so we're gonna put them to one side over there Ta da and this is by Magic. These are the boots that were issued after these ones. Okay, when these ones were phased out, late 80s, early 90s, these boots were issued. They come in. Okay, as you can see, they're a lot shorter. They're not as high. There you go. They're not as high as these ones. Um, they're a lot lighter. A hell of a lot lighter. And if you were to compare the two, these look the better quality made ones, okay? Real thick quality leather. The stitching seems fine. Um, very supple, very comfortable indeed. I mean, you can tell straight away that the leather is a lot more softer than those big rigid boots which we, sure, we, sure, um, we looked at earlier, okay? And the differences are obviously with the um, the speed lacing system at the top. So you've got nice and tight pieces there, and you can speed lace quickly to get them on and off. I can understand that. I see the concept behind that. A great pair of boots. Now, I originally got these ones before these ones. These I was going to wear at the Irvine training place where I visited on the video. Um, I took them out of the box, no problem at all, put them on. So comfortable, amazing, a brilliant, amazing pair of boots. They were so light, so comfy. They were just walking around like a big pair of lightweight slippers. I was really, really impressed. Until, <laughs> now, you're going to cringe at this if you're not aware of this. Until, um, a friend at work, he said, what have you got stuck on the bottom of your boots? There's black stuff coming off. So I thought, ah, oh, it's probably because they've been polished. And they might have got carried away and sort of rubbed onto the soles, okay? So, I thought, when I just turned my foot upside down to look underneath, oh, I nearly had a heart attack. Now, are you ready for this? <laughs> look at the soles. Look how crap they are. Now, that is absolutely shocking, right? I just couldn't believe the state of these. <laughs> when I took them out, they looked brand new. Okay, there, there was no problem with them at all. <sighs> but look, it's actually coming apart. Can you see that? Absolutely friggin' useless. So, of course, all these bits were going over the floor. Okay. So I was really gobsmacked to be honest and as I said the quality of the tops, the uppers, I'm absolutely, I just love them, they're so good. So I took them to um, Simon at Wilderness Leisure and um, he just laughed and he said he's seen literally hundreds and hundreds of pairs of boots just like this. You know the top's brilliant underneath, absolutely deteriorating as you walk. And I said well I like the top so much um, I was thinking about getting them resold and he said don't bother. You see, they're, they're just completely constructed to the boot, and it's just a waste of time. And he proved that, and he just pulled the chunk off. Look at that. Resoling those, you'd have to go to a master cobbler 
and the price you're going to pay and the time, it's just not worth it. Okay, and it's such a shame because the quality, as I keep saying, is spot on on the tops. Really good leather, very comfortable. But that. Uh, now, I've been in contact with a few guys since I discovered these. And it turns out that these have a five year shelf life. Okay, so they manufacture them pretty much as soon as they come off the production line, five years to the day, they can sit on the shelf and be perfect. The second you walk on them, the rubber underneath will just fall apart. Now, as I said, it come to a shock. It's an understatement, to be honest. I mean, I, I remember years ago, a long time ago, the crow's foot really meant something. Obviously, it doesn't anymore. It just appears that everything's been made to make loads of money. And the thing that worries me the most is um, our servicemen <clears throat> who serve on the front line, etc., They've been issued kit which is only designed to last for a short amount of time. Now, it's 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 a horrific thought, knowing that the guys who do everything in their power to protect us all have been issued kit which is just not up to the job. It's sickening, okay? So the point of this video is I didn't want um, anyone to make the same mistake I did, okay? You see, yeah, British Army, um, military, crow's foot, hard wearing, built to last, good quality, cheap, reliable kit. Not in this case. Not in this case at all. I mean, just check it out one more time. That is absolutely shocking, isn't it? It's soul destroying, <laughs> pardon the pun. So, there you go. If anyone was thinking of getting these particular boots, um, the way I can tell them apart and um, very quickly is you've got this seam along here. They're the ones to avoid and with these on on top. You might be lucky. You might get um, a pair that was made within six months and you've got like four years or so on them. That's fine. But don't take the risk, okay? That's the difference I thought I'd show you. Old, good quality, new, cheap shit. <laughs> At the end of the day, that's exactly what it is. Um, the laces are good. I'm going to take the laces out before I throw these in the bin. Um, they're just an absolute waste. I mean, it's not really worth taking them apart for the leather, to be honest. Just chuck the whole lot in the bin. Um, I've got a full refund by the guy, by the way. I spent, I think it was 20 something pounds for these. And, you know, after wearing them, as soon as I received them, I just messaged him straight away within the hour of him actually turning up um, where I work. And I said, um, not being funny, mate, but. Um, they're lovely boots, but they're just falling apart as I'm walking, so I want a full refund. And um, he said, as a gesture of goodwill, he's prepared to do that, not a problem, and that's exactly what he done. So these are going to get chucked in the bin. These I just love now. It just reminds me of the good old days. <laughs> so as a heads up on um, the British Army, I don't even know what they call these. They can't be combat high boots because they're not just high enough, in my opinion. I mean, you can tell there's a buddy. There's an inch short there they good old boots. Okay, I hope that's helped someone who was thinking about buying a pair of these. Um, in my opinion, go for the DMS or the Combat High boots if you want a good, heavy, well-made boot. Okay, if you want comfort and lightweight, go for lowers or or something like that. Okay, or um, there's a few other good manufacturers. Hakes um, spring to mind. Mendel aren't too bad. Belleville, of course, and Dana boots, American stuff. But stay away from these. They're crap. Thanks for watching, guys. Stay funky.